Mark Santiago here, and welcome to the Empowered AF Podcast, where each episode we share powerful strategies to help you communicate, act, and lead like an empowered man. Thanks for joining me. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining me for another VIP case study. I've got, uh, I always say this, my favorite client, but Noah Imatucci <laughs> is definitely one of my favorite clients um, that we've had the pleasure of working with him for a while. And he's just wrapped up the VIP portion of what we do. And Noah is actually joined by his wife, Bethany. So guys, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. Um, so what I wanted to do is because a lot of guys are, you know, watching this and they're in that place of brokenness. They're in that place of, I don't know what's next. I don't know if this is over. I don't know if I can save this and all those things. And, and so every time we start with a guy in our program, we always say to them, this is about the man. This isn't about the marriage. The marriage is struggling, but because there's something happening in the man that needs to change and needs to shift. And it's a two way street. And, and Bethany will share some of her story and what she was working on at the same time. But, but Noah, can you tell us what it was like um, before you started working with us? Um, I know you had kind of gotten into our ecosystem several months ago, and then you kind of yep. dropped off for a little bit and then came back. What was yeah. happening? Uh, so, you know, over the course of, I don't know, the last couple of years, you know, um, Beth had come to me a couple of years ago and said that she had wanted a divorce and we had worked on the marriage gone through um, therapy, couple therapy, and we were good, and then we weren't good, and that has gone on for the last few years. Um, so I'd say April, uh, August was when I saw a video that you had done uh, about you know setting boundaries, and that's something that I've never really even thought about doing. And um, so the video that I saw was talking about basically saying, hey, if, if you're gonna separate, then stay in the bed and make sure that you set that boundary of staying in the bed. So I remember having that conversation with Beth in August when we were having one of our fights and we basically were at the point again, we're talking about separation. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't want to sleep on the couch anymore. Or I don't want to sleep on the couch. I want to stay in the bed. Uh, if even if we're getting separated. So I remember seeing your video and that was the first time I thought about setting a boundary like that. Um, so then in September, kind of everything went to shit, and I found your program after finding a couple of other programs, and I locked onto your program because it made the most sense to me, and, I, and, and the way you spoke really resonated with me, and um, I grasped onto it and never looked back. <laughs> That's awesome. So, Bethany, for you, what was... What was going through your mind? I mean, like you guys have struggled. You're asking for a divorce a couple of years ago. And then he's like, I'm not sleeping on the couch anymore. Like, what was the frustration level like for you? I mean, I'm sure it was pretty high. Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah, it was just because everything had been like a cycle with us. It was mm -hmm. we were in just a vicious cycle. And I just was like, I want to get off this roller coaster. I don't want to do this anymore. Um, it didn't really bother me that he was sleeping in, in the same bed. Like, I wasn't. I wasn't mad or anything about that. I just, I just felt exhausted and kind of numb to everything I'd say. Yeah. So then he joins this program. Um, Noah, tell me like, you know, as you were starting to go through it, like what was your experience like? So I actually, I, I went back today over uh, some of my journal entries. So in the first week I wrote like four journal entries and they were long. They're probably like a couple thousand words. Um, a lot of emotion. I was I was really hurting. Um, the day before my call, um, I was basically on the couch crying, uh, just miserable. Uh, you know, Beth had thrown out a lot of the stuff that we had, uh, like pictures and photographs and cards and stuff like that. And I was really hurting after after seeing all of that. And you know, the next day I was also a mess. And, um, you know, we were communicating, but we re weren't really communicating super well. Um, as I started the program, you know, boundaries was a big thing. Uh, I was journaling. Uh, there was a lot going on. But, you know, starting to set those initial boundaries to protect myself uh, was, was so important. 
And that first week, I mean, that was, it was rough, but it was also the, it was like the biggest catalyst for change for me hmm. um, to try to do something different than what I had done in the past. And, and this time was really focusing on me yeah, um, and focusing on saving, saving me. So essentially you stopped sort of blaming her and started looking at yourself. Yeah. I mean, there was times where I did blame her um, and it was, it was like a lot for her because I remember a particular day where she, you know, we, I was using power statements and I was communicating well, but I kept on like blaming her for stuff right? mm -hmm. or, or not blaming, but laying things at her feet and it, it started piling up and, and she felt like overwhelmed because it was all coming back to her. Yeah. And that's when I really started realizing what the point of the program was, which was, Hey, this isn't making her feel better. And it's not making me feel better, even though I'm communicating better. I need to really take ownership of me and what I did, my my failures in the marriage. So, Bethany, did you notice he was trying to shift his his communication at all? Because I always say this thing: men like to grunt; they don't know how to communicate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it was it was um, a bit much at first because we went from not really talking about stuff to every night we were having like hard conversations and it was kind of wearing me down. And I remember like, it was it, he, what he was talking about. At one point I was just like, can we just do something other than talk about hard stuff? <laughs> can we just not have a hard conversation? It was, but it was a big change because we went from, you know, not having, not talking about the hard stuff to talking about it all. So I definitely noticed a big right. change. So has he taught you what like some of our languages, like what a power statement is or a power triangle? Has he, so like as a woman, how do you receive those things? Well, it wasn't all, I wasn't, it wasn't all received well for mm -hmm. sure. Um, but it is, it's easier to communicate when I know that he's like, he's not aggressively coming at me. Like I think he softened a lot with the way that he was talking to me and he wasn't coming at me like in an aggressive manner. So it was easier to hear him. Yeah. Did you start to understand his, the feeling part of it? Like, were you like, did that help you start to understand? Cause I know a lot of times with men, it's like, we just throw shit at the woman and we're aggressive in it because we can't articulate. I feel like a lost little boy. I feel yeah. really, like, how did, yeah. how did you respond to that? Like, did that help at all? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. And I actually remember a specific time where he, he said like, I'm hurt and like, I feel hurt. And I was like, okay, like that made that I can, I can understand and that like, I can hear you. We can talk about that rather than like you did this, you know? Mm. Yeah. It's it, so he went from attacking constantly to starting to, to like change the way he was communicating, which is exactly what we're trying to build in that beginning. Um, so tell me like, no, you know, with, with you and, and the situation, um, you know, you got to this point where you said, I've got to start owning my shit. And in week four, we really, really own our shit. So yeah. <laughs> what was that, that process for you before you even wrote the letter? Like, what was that like? You started to open your eyes to stuff, huh? Yeah. So I, I want to say like week, you know, week two, week three, learning a lot. Um, going into week four, I started feel it was like two or three days before week four started where I started having this feeling in myself that um, I wanted to apologize. And it wasn't out of a place of like, oh, I want to make her feel better or I feel guilty or you know, whatever it was, I, I need to apologize for like the history, my, my huge role in where we're at right now and really take ownership um, and express that to her. And then week four happens to be where you write the apology letter. So I had already started crafting it in my mind and we had talked um, I think right around that time and yeah, you that's right. I? We did talk. Yeah. You and I did. Okay. And you know, um, you told me, you know, write it out and give it to her and then detach from the outcome, you know, see what happens. And I remember thinking, Oh, okay. I've got this in my mind. I'm going to write this out. Uh, I had written it out, you know, as the exercise, but I, I, 
basically did the same thing, but I added added a lot to it. Um, and I said, you know, I, I was going out somewhere or something. I was doing something, so I handed her the letter and and you know left. And so she read it. You know, so from your perspective, Bethany. I mean, at this point, he's finally starting to like have those aha moments like wow i fucked up and like i i have not loved you the way you need to be loved and so you get this from him you've seen a little bit of the communication changes i mean what were you thinking when you got that like what is this like like were you like hesitant or um it was it was like well maybe like we're finally doing something different now because okay. i was i was seeing a side of him that i hadn't really seen mm. before like um so it was really it was it really touched me so with the letter like you know it touched you what did you see in that was there a shift was there something that he said in there and you don't have to say specifically what it was but was there something in that that just went oh my gosh like i'm seeing this change now like did, is that what kind of happened for you um I don't remember a specific, like, I don't, I'm trying to think of like specific things. Sorry. Fine. It's little, fine. Yeah. This was like four weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I just remember the feeling of like, okay, like he's, I remember that he was taking ownership of, of certain things and I, and I, it felt different. It felt like I wasn't being blamed for everything. And so that, that's what I was looking for. It was like, okay, so you didn't feel blamed anymore. Yeah. Looking at him then. Did that say, okay, I can start to trust you again? Like, like as a woman, what does that make you feel? Cause I don't, I'm not a woman, so I don't know, but what does that make you feel when, when that happens? Well, it definitely, we, we had to completely like rebuild our trust in our friendship. Even I, I, I feel like we, we had, we were so broken that I feel like we, we were like starting at zero of like trusting each other. And yeah, I think that really helped. That's awesome. So catch me up to kind of where you guys are now in terms of you're still building, obviously not, you know, nothing's in the clear, right? Like, like it's always this process, but like, give me an overview of kind of what communications like uh, just in general, how things are going for you. I think things are going uh, so, so much, so much more incredibly better than they were back then. Um, and it's not just because I, I think that things are good, but I think we do communicate in a more clear manner, you know, um, you know, if, if something is going on, you know, around the house, you know, we kind of just, I'll ask if she needs help or she'll tell me, uh, before it was kind of like there was some mind reading going on. Mm. Um, or I would, I would assume that she wanted something done or, you know, I would, I would make assumptions. Yeah. I would like, tell myself a story about something that that she had going on you know she's acting a certain way so she must feel this way and i found that i have stopped doing that or or i'll catch myself doing it and i'll say oh no i don't i don't know that for sure and if if i think she needs a, a hand or if i think she needs help or wants to talk i'll just ask her yeah. um and if and if things aren't okay or you know she doesn't seem happy and I'll ask her and she doesn't want to talk about it or push further. I just, okay. You know, I'm not going to assume that she's upset with me or I need to do something where in the past I would be upset. I would be like, Oh, something's wrong. I did something wrong. I must figure it out and try to get her to be, you know, okay again. Yeah. Um, so I don't act that way anymore. You're not trying to save her essentially. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and, and that's a huge, huge shift for me uh, because, you know, number one, I don't think if, 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 if that was me, I wouldn't want someone to think all those thoughts because I woke up and had a bad day or because I was pissed off about being stuck in traffic or something like that. I wouldn't want someone to think, want her to think that I was mad at her because of something that was out of her control. Yeah. So, so Bethany to you, I mean, what, what have you seen? Where do you feel like you guys are at, et cetera? Uh, well, there's a lot less anxiety in our relationship and just um like i don't walk on eggshells i'm not like i it, i used to 
not enjoy. I used to enjoy when he was not home. And now I like having him home. <laughs> I like having him around. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I was telling a friend that he's going away for a couple of weeks in December for work. And, yeah. and, um, I was like, usually when he goes away, I like really look forward to it. And I was like, I'm actually going to really miss him this time around. Oh. And so for, <laughs> for me, like, that's how I knew, Oh, some like, there's a change there because typically I'd be like, all right, go. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome to hear. Um, thank you so much, uh, Bethany for coming on Noah. I'd, I'd love to hear for, for you, what you would tell guys that are thinking about joining the program. They're not sure, you know, obviously it's an investment. There's, there's a lot of things swirling in their heads. They're trying to save their marriage, all this shit. What would you tell those guys? So, the thing I like to tell guys, oh, well, first of all, is I always like to ask guys what they want when they come to, you know, the Empowered Man um, site on Facebook or in the group, because a lot of times you see them, they, they make these long posts and I, I did the same thing and nowhere in there can you find out what, the, what they want, right. you know, what do you want in this, what do you want in this situation? Um, I, I recommend people join this program whether or not you want to save your marriage or not, because you need to, you need to focus on yourself and saving you first. You cannot, you know, if you're in an airplane and it's run out of oxygen, you've got to put that mask on yourself before you can save everybody else or anybody else. So if, if you're, if you're dead on the floor, you're, you're useless. And the same thing goes to your marriage. Most important person is you. If you want to save that marriage or, or not, figure it out, you know, going from there. So um, just the, the, the skills that I've learned and picked up in the program over the eight weeks, the accountability piece, um, every, everything that you guys have set up uh, from the coaching, the accountability, the worksheets, it's just, it's just amazing. I, I really enjoyed going through the program and anybody on the fence should just, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> Um, Bethany, do you have any final thoughts in terms of guys that are also in the same boat that we were just talking about, but from a, from a woman's perspective, what would you say to them? Um, yeah, don't do it for your marriage, do it for yourself because in the end, <laughs> your marriage, it, it's not guaranteed to last forever, but you always have the relationship with yourself and you're, so I, my viewpoint is you're worth it. You're worth the working on yourself. That's awesome. Coming from a woman's perspective, I always honor that um, because a lot of times guys, they get in here and they just bad mouth and this and that. And it's like, you know, you just don't know what, what there's, there's two stories. There's two sides to every story. And, um, you know, so I, it was an honor to be able to even like have the two of you on to share that. Thank you so much. Um, you know, look forward to your continued growth. Uh, Noah, as we continue talking and working and Bethany, thank you again for, for coming on. Of course. Hey, if what you heard today really resonated with you and you want to connect with me, then here's what I want you to do. Pull out your phone right now and go to empoweredman.co slash group. That's empoweredman.co, not com, dot co slash group. So you can join our free Facebook group and connect with me there. We also have a ton of free content and trainings in that group to help you when you join. So until then, this is Mark signing off on Empowered AF.